is everyone doing? I think I'm going to do a new intro every different week. I don't even know when this episode is going to drop. So by then, who knows? And I think also every week, I like the song. It's cool. But I feel like it almost takes itself too seriously. I like it. Do you? I really like it. It had a good beat. Mm. Did someone comment that and now you're being sensitive? No. Oh. No, I, I, I just, I hear some other podcasts out there and it's just like, blah, 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 and fun. And, and I'm just like, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, listen to this podcast. I'm a rap and dance. You also sound like Kermit the Frog. <laughs> That's my go-to voice whenever I do another character is just coming uh-huh. in, in Kermit. Um, anyways, thanks for, for listening or watching. If you're on YouTube, we have our, Essential oils diffusers going with natural habits. We are here. We are Vang Shui. We're ready to go. I am joined by my trusty sidekick and producer, Rochelle. Sam is not with us today, but uh, another time. And then we also have Tasha. Hello. Thanks Hello. for joining us. Of course. Um, I thought this would be a, a fun episode to learn more about Tasha. And we do get a lot of questions about, uh, obviously, breakups. Mm-hmm. Um you had shared with us on, on Colton season that you have been divorced and we do get a lot of questions about that and not necessarily specific to divorce, but I think moving on in relationships uh, can be very difficult. And if you've ever gone through a serious relationship uh, or, or have been in a relationship where you feel a little bit damaged, I know I have, you start worrying about baggage or the perception of yourself. And I thought it'd be a, an interesting conversation to get your take on, um, on that. And, and maybe the people listening will find this to be relatable and, and helpful. And, uh, we'll just, uh, go from there. <laughs> okay. I'm into it. Um, I don't know. Do you want to like, you know, you had, you've been divorced. Was that your first serious relationship? Yes. So I married my first boyfriend. How old were you? Um, when I got married. Yeah. I How old were you first started dating? I guess. I had just turned 21. Oh, wow. When you met him. Mm-hmm. And then how long did you date for? Um, six years. Before well, you got married? No, four years mm-hmm. before I got married. Then I was married for just under two. Did you guys break up at all before you got engaged? No. So just a- Actually, now that you, we did for like three weeks. Okay. Sometimes that's helpful. But also that was mean? really, it was a long, it was, I was still in college. Um, he lived in Mammoth and- you know, that commute is just kind of, sure. long distance relationships are hard. He was your first love? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I dated him all throughout college. Once I graduated, um, I got engaged mm-hmm. and I moved to Mammoth. I lived there for two years and we got married while I was up there. And then we moved back down to Orange County. And then shortly after... Other than you were in love yes. and that's why you got engaged, thinking back and reflecting on your relationship, like would, were there times where like, do you feel like you, was there any part of you got engaged or either both of you, like this was the logical next step. So that's why you got engaged or it was like, we're definitely ready and I know I'm in love. Um, um, does that make, does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. Um, it definitely did feel like there was a next step that needed to be had. Um, sure. I think we, we, we do that a lot. I know yeah. I'm moving in, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. When I first got engaged, I was like, I guess we moved in. So I, uh, <laughs> we're gonna, um, will you yeah. marry me? Yeah. No, it wasn't like that. It was more so like we had talked about it a lot and being long distance, you kind of talk about your future quite a bit. I mean, you, all you really do is communicate. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I was up at Mammoth, he asked me, and yeah, I we got engaged right away. And then you were engaged for how long? Um, let's see, about a year. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then you were de- married for uh, less than two years. So less than two years. Not- how quickly into the marriage were you concerned about the marriage? You know what the thing about that relationship is, we got along very well. Um, I think we were each other's best friend and I think that we had a lot of similar goals for the future. So Mm -hmm. we, everything was going very, very, very well up until we moved to Orange County. Um, and I think that's just because. Were you married? You weren't married yet. No, we were. Okay. You were married and then moved moved back to Orange County. Gotcha. Um, 
and I don't know, people that are not from here kind of get um, curious about all people and the different lifestyles. Shiny new toys? That. Yeah. Nah, yeah. Um, so maybe that's too much for some people to handle. Okay. You know? And so I, I'm not, I don't think we need to dive into no, the really. specific <laughs> marriage. I'm more curious about the, I'm asking these questions just kind of under, you know, sense of your mind frame and it might hopefully be relatable to people listening of like, um, you know, why you thought it didn't work and then how you process that, you know? So once you decided that you guys were going to get divorced, what was the kind of your immediate thought about your future? Um, well, just to re- uh, get the record straight, I didn't want to get divorced. Okay. Um, Interesting. Okay. So that was obviously, I mean, yeah, I didn't. I mean, it was, I was in it for the long haul. Yeah. I mean, I'm well aware that relationships have their hardships and you're not always going to love that person or like that person every single day. Like it's a thing you need to continuously work on. Um, And I know that you got to try as hard as you can. So that's what I did. I mean, I guess in terms of, I think I'm trying to set this up for your state of mind. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, I've never been married, but I have. When, first time I got engaged, I was 28 and found out I was cheated on. So, well, I, you know, for me, that I never thought I would get engaged only to get cheated on. So, my my mind frame immediately, I felt embarrassment and fear, and I immediately started questioning: 100%. What are people going to think? Uh, am I damaged goods? You know, and while well, you know, I felt like I had this scarlet letter. Because yeah. growing up when I was younger, I thought I'm going to meet someone, I'll fall in love. And when I get engaged, that's it. And it's all going to look perfect and feel perfect and be this great story to tell everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, well, my ex was unfaithful as well. Okay. So, Motherfucker. <laughs> but it's just that, um, yeah, I kind of, he was moving on and I just was kind of forced to in a way. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I was embarrassed. I was ashamed. I felt very undesirable. I was, I wasn't really like low place at that that time. So it was really hard. Divorce sucks. How long uh, before you were, I mean, there's a separation period and then the whole legal thing. But once you guys were pretty much separated and broken up, how long before you started getting back out there and and trying to date again? Um, I was never actively trying to date, um, but I was going out with my girlfriends. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was still just figuring everything out. Um, Was... To, you might, was there a period where I asked because like, was there a time where you told yourself, I don't even want to date? Oh. Where you shut it down? Yeah. Right after I got divorced. Okay. I didn't think I was going to get married again. I was very closed off to the idea. Okay. Um, dating, last thing on my mind. Sure. I mean, I didn't even know, I had lost myself to be quite honest. So mm-hmm. how the heck can I start dating somebody else? Um, and another thing that was my first boyfriend. So it's not like I'm, I know- the whole dating game. I'm not a player. But um, then it was a couple of months later when I was out with my girlfriends and I did meet someone that showed interest to me. And I will say it kind of caught me off guard. Like it felt kind of good and fun. Yeah. But at the same time, I was like, no. Like he asked what my name was and I said, yeah, no. And I walked away. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just because yeah. I was, I felt so awkward. Sure. I was like, why are you talking to me? <laughs> What is happening? You know, it's, it's it's interesting that you say that because, again, we get a lot of questions. You know, dating's fucking hard, you know? It is. And so here we have a beautiful young, la- young lady. And in this story, this guy's interested in you, and rightfully so. And you kind of abruptly shut him down. Yeah. And here's this, and again, like, I'm, all I'm pointing out is sometimes when we shoot our shot and we get turned down, don't immediately... Make it about you because we just, de- we never know what's going on in people's lives. So here, you know, you just weren't ready, you know? Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I think that's just an interesting <laughs> takeaway. Uh, so okay, go ahead. Um, well, yeah. So I walked away. With, I was with my girlfriends and they're like, what just happened? They're like, why aren't you talking to him? He's cute. And I was like, oh. And so I turned around. I'm like, <laughs> like you're oh, right. He actually oh, is yeah. kind of cute. <laughs> Should I go back? They're like, no. I'm like, I'm going back. And I went back. Great. And I introduced myself and yeah, I just started kind of talking to him. And I think because I was getting, I don't want to say getting attention, but someone was interested in me, it felt really good. And I hadn't felt feelings like that in a really, really long time. What happened with that situation? Did it turn into something? I mean, so we started talking. Okay. With that, 
I had told him right off the bat. So going back to the whole baggage thing, um, I felt like when I started like being interested in someone after that, or I started talking to a guy, I had to be like, by the way, I'm divorced. Right away? I mean, like how quickly? Like date one? I mean, oh <laughs> yeah. Really? I, I just feel like I don't want it to be a surprise. Cause I was going through so much still, like I would be so happy. And then 10 minutes later, I'd just be like, I'm going to cry. Date date one, huh? <laughs> I wasn't going on dates though. So this is like. But when you started dating, you felt like. I had to You get felt it. this pressure of. Yes. I need to be honest with this guy yes. before this first date ends. Yes. Huh. I mean, to be honest, I, the last thing I'd want is to start talking to someone, um, have feelings reciprocated and then being to me. And but it's the first date. Then like a couple weeks later, I'd be like, by the way, I'm divorced. Like, I would want to know up front, wouldn't you? I'm not saying I wouldn't want to know, but I, I do think sometimes we put too much unnecessary pressure on ourselves in a I first agree. date. It's like, it's the first date, man. I just want to, especially <laughs> in this world, uh, see if you look like your profile picture on oh. your dating app. I want to know if like, is, is there a natural chemistry? Yeah. Uh, do we just enjoy each other's company? Like a first date could be a cup of coffee or a drink. I don't think we need, I don't think either people need to feel responsible for like really like letting them know anything personal if they don't want to. And listen, I love getting into like the weeds of conversations if it feels organic. I mean, yeah. I love a good first date where two people are willing to really get into it, fine. I'm saying, I don't think anyone should feel the pressure of this obligation because how dare you on date three suggest just, you know, I was divorced. And if that happens on date three, if a guy is not okay with it, that's fine. You invested two dates. I, I guess don't, like- I just, the pressure going in with this anxiety of having to explain yourself and at first date, I think is too much for anyone. I don't think they should have to bear that burden. I agree. But it goes back to that feeling of un feeling undesirable. And no, like, no, I, I just I, got like the I biggest you, rejection. Yeah. And so I felt like, like, why would you want to talk to me? You know what I mean? So I was kind of like no. putting it out there self-deprecation. I really appreciate you saying this. I mean, that's kind of why I want to have this conversation. I think a lot of people feel this. Yeah. I mean, again, I've never been divorced, but I mean, it's all uh, baggage and pain is relative. Uh, first time you're going to fall in love and you get dumped, mm -hmm. even if it's just, you know, they don't cheat on you, they just end it. Like that's, no one expects to have their heart broken. If you mm -hmm. get cheated on, you don't expect that. If you get engaged and it doesn't work out, you don't expect that. And certainly marriage, you don't expect that. So it's all relative, mm -hmm. obviously divorce being, and I think that's a common thing. And so I really appreciate you being open about like what your mindset is, because I think sometimes we just make it harder on ourselves to uh, move on. And then we start, I mean, I know I did judge our, judge myself about and, and start filling in the holes of perceptions of what people might think of me before right. I even gave them a chance to form their own opinion. I guess in that, that too, I was scared um, someone else would say it before I told them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, this girl's like going through a divorce right now. Like, And what if know? they, and what if they did? I was so ashamed. That's the thing. Like yeah. I would be like, you know. Like I, no, I, I, again, I haven't been divorced, but I, I felt shamed when I, when I was cheated on and when I was engaged. Yeah. I, it's like, well, what happened like, to you guys? I was like, it, it just didn't work out. Yeah. You know, too, sometimes things don't work out. And what, you know, and I was like, just don't find out that she cheated on me. Don't, right? don't find out, don't find out. And it, you know, I, I've, I've told this story before. It was ultimately the best thing that ever happened to me. Mm -hmm. And that's when I really felt like I grew up is having that realization of like, wait, I, her cheating on me is her problem, not me. And next time someone asks, I'm going to, I had this thought of, I had this thought of like, next time someone asks me, I'm just going to fucking tell them the truth. Yeah. And I was scared to do that, but I'm not going to, in like in a casual conversation, not on like a date, but just like, this is what happened. You yeah. know, kind of like just curious. And they're like, oh, well, <laughs> shitty of them. And I was like, yeah, it was. And you know, it was like this really big relief of like, of relief, yeah. I'm not going to judge myself and I'm not going to be afraid to tell you the truth because I'm afraid of what you're going to think right. of me. Um, and that was a big moment for me. And I, I do think, you know, as you, you're sharing your story, I, I think we all deal with this. Anyone who's had this, like, feel shame. Yeah. Um, is an interesting thing. So what, what, uh, so you started doing this. Did, did you start realizing, did you come to this, um, like awareness that you were doing this and did you do it differently? Um, with this person? It's just in general. Um, 
Like, yeah, I'm curious, how long did that, that situation last? I mean, it lasted quite a bit. We actually became really good friends. Cool. I mean, he worked through a lot of things with me. Mm -hmm. I will admit that. Um, I, I was in the midst of going through this divorce. So he was like my backbone for a minute and um, I'll never take that away from him. So it kind of maybe dragged out longer than it should have. Um, but at the same time, I was really open and honest and trying to cut it off when I felt right. When you say longer than it should have, yeah. do you feel like, I'm getting the sense that maybe he liked you more than you liked him mm -hmm. and there's some guilt on, on that? But a little bit. Well, I knew that I didn't want to be in a serious relationship. Sure. I had just gotten out of a long-term relationship and I was going through a divorce. So the last thing I really wanted to do was jump into another relationship. This was like my first chance in my 20s to really mm -hmm. do my own thing. So yeah, I was being selfish in that aspect. That's okay. I mean, it sounds like you were also trying to be honest with him. 100%. Yeah. And listen, I, I mean, I can, again, marriage, but when you're in a committed relationship, it's nice having that best friend and that person yeah. you always count on, you lose that when you aren't in a relationship. And yeah. it's different with friends and it's great to have friends to talk to, but that person with that expectation is always there. And to be able to find someone who's willing to fill that void, I think it happens often. I think uh, it's great for you that you, I mean, yeah, maybe you were selfish, but at least you were aware that, mm -hmm. because I think sometimes that, you know, that rebound concept comes from this idea of, I need to fill this void. And mm -hmm. so I'm going to be less selective about my needs because I need to fill this void as soon as possible because yeah. I'm afraid to do it on my own with a rebound. And I think a lot of times people get in these, you know, instead of realizing it's not for you, you men and women do that. Where they, All of a sudden I've been dating this guy for a year and a half <laughs> that I don't even really like, right. but like, I just, I, I'm not alone. Yeah. And so. Well, I mean, like I did like him, so I won't discredit yeah, that, but yeah. and that's, we're that's, never in a, a boyfriend and girlfriend relationship. Um, is this the guy who ended up not being cool? Yes. For those of you who don't know, um, I have opinions on on this in, in Bachelor World. This will be the little bit of Bachelor discussion <laughs> that we have. But Taisha and an Us Weekly, and I love my Us Weekly, but sometimes the truth can escape them. Um, or not necessarily, but it's more of a one-sided story. But so much is made of, of Bachelor Nation and, and when they release cast or when, and, and, and the dating history leading up to um, their time on the show. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like this friend of yours um, suggested that you were dating, uh, as the headline says, days before she left for the show. Um. I don't know if you have an opinion on this before you maybe share your truth. Let's assume everything he says is true. Okay. Who cares? <laughs> um, my point is, is that people break up. Thank you. Um, and when it comes to the casting process, I mean, it's, a, it's such a kind of a cloudy mess because um, – yeah, it's a it's a reality TV show meant for dating and finding love, but it's also a TV show. And when you're going through the casting process, at least for me, you don't even know what the hell you're going through or what this opportunity is. You certainly don't know if they're going to ask you. Mm -hmm. I mean, the hundreds of thousands, it's thousands narrowed down to hundreds, narrowed down to um, 50 or 60, then narrowed down to 25 to 30. And they're always telling you they can change their mind at any moment. Mm -hmm. And the power is always, you know, I, I appreciate where the show's coming from. But, you know, for me, I, I've joked about this. I was a last second ad. Uh, I went through the casting process, but I could tell that they, I was not their first choice. And they kind of admitted that later on, kind of jokingly, <laughs> how they thought I was going to be boring. The whole while, it's like, what, like, do I go on dates? This is weird because right. like, I, if I say yes, I'm going to go on the show, but like, I don't even know if they're going to ask me. And if I do, do I like her? Or can I go home night one? How much of my life am I stopping while I'm going through this weird casting process? Right. Um, and, you know, I guess if you're talking to someone and then that can get cloudy. I think some people are talking to someone and it sounds like maybe even you acknowledge that uh, you were upfront about that, but you kind of maybe hung out with them out of convenience and, and dating can get cloudy. And 
I mean, I don't know. Like, again, if this is totally true, you ended the relationship and you're just like, there's this opportunity or show. And as a result, I need to be up front with you because I've had to do this opportunity. Right. I can't date you and I can't keep hanging out. I don't know. I just also like if, if some guy is going to go to a tabloid, I personally like, you know, talk about right reasons. Like he can have a problem with it and be hurt. I right. think selling out and speaking your truth to a tabloid um, immediately suggests you have alternative motives. That's just my two cents. Um, I appreciate that. So do you have I mean, any, do you have anything you want to add to this? I mean, I, I think the thing is I was very open and honest with going on The Bachelor was approached to me. Mm -hmm. I didn't apply. I actually was nominated. So okay. that's one thing that's sure. a little different. And when you got this nomination, he immediately found out about it? Um, no, actually, when I got the nomination, I got a phone call and I actually said, no, thank you. Okay. Um, and it wasn't until a couple of weeks later where um, I was like, you know what? Maybe I should. Um, and yeah, as soon as I met with them, I told him. Okay. So I was very open and honest. And I was what like, was his response? I mean, it was kind of hard for him to be like, oh, okay. It's a weird thing to process, I think, for the person on the receiving end. Because right. at the time, you know, for me, mm -hmm. I was totally single when they asked, when I, I was nominated. I was nominated by uh, my best friend's wife who was best friends with my ex-girlfriend. Right. We had been broken up for a year and a half. You know, so like. Jeez. But you know, we had mutual friends, so we we saw each other a lot, and I felt no like responsibility to let her know. But I knew that she was going to find out, and I was worried because there, it's not just dating someone; it's the fear on their end of like, not like, are you going to talk about me right. and and all these variables of like, I got to see, you know. So it's I appreciate the other side that. of of that, but um, so it was. I get why it would be hard for him. Yeah, and I was very upfront with saying, you know what? I made a lot of decisions in my life based off of a guy. Yeah. And at that time, that was my husband. Sure. So, and someone I was engaged with. And I'm not going to do that anymore. And I realized that can come off, I don't know, um, selfish, but I was being selfish. And I think that that's okay. Um, and it's not like I was in a, we weren't engaged. We weren't in a long-term relationship. I don't know. Do you get what I'm trying or to even say? If it, I totally do. I also sometimes, the selfish thing can be a little tricky in a sense because sometimes people, selfish is such a, it's so easy to call someone selfish. Selfish people call sel people selfish all the time because like if you're selfish, <laughs> it's very easy to think everyone else is being selfish right. because it's all about you. Right. I'm not saying this is the, that's what he was doing, but um, also sometimes being selfish um is helpful for other people because if listen, and ideally in a, a happy relationship, you can be selfish in the definition of you need to meet your needs first too, right? right? Can have a relationship with your needs not being met. And when you're both selfish, you both being selfish about your needs line up, right? You're right. both selfish about what makes you happy. And when you're selfish, you're like, I'm, I know what I want. I need to think about me. And what I want is you right. selfishly. I want you. It, and so if you're like thinking about what you want and it's not, that's not the answer, is it selfish? Sure. But you saved him a lot. Like, should you have dated him I mean, and like let him on and no. not done a show because you were afraid of hurting his feelings? Exactly. I, I just don't think that does anyone any good. It doesn't. And it's that, that means I'm not giving you a hundred percent. You know yeah. what I mean? And I told him that, look, I don't know if this is going to be long term. Sure. We talked about it, about me not being ready for marriage. And I didn't think I was going to get married again, but you know what? I think, I don't know. I just, it got blown out of proportion and it's not what it is. So I think it's an easy tabloid opportunity. Agree. Um, you know, and I understand why the tabloids run it because it gets clicks. And I, I, I think the fact that he's going to go out there and share his truth, it kind of sheds a light on maybe his selfishness. Um, not to say that he doesn't have a right to feel a certain way, but uh, doing that doesn't accomplish anything other than getting attention. Yeah. Um, so that's that's my two cents. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, we are going to take a quick break to make sure that we can pay for this great lighting <laughs> um, that uh, is uh, that's making us glow. Yes. Nick is obsessed with lighting. Are you? I, I just think lighting is key okay. when it comes to being on camera. 
Or I take the pictures at the end and he makes me take like a hundred <laughs> pictures. A hundred is an exaggeration, but I do, I think it's important to find the light. I, I'm, uh, I don't- uh, Do you have lots of lights at your house when you're taking selfies every morning? Yes. Or- I don't take a lot of selfies, but I, I am conscious of where the sun is shining through my bedroom window. I do have, I, I do have, oh uh, I have one of those lights on my mirror. Uh, whatever. Those you lights know, are amazing though. I have to say. They're great. And I'm sorry. I, I don't use the word influence or anything. It's a joke, but oh, I do, no. I do post stuff on social media <laughs> and I do, uh, use it to uh, run my business and I do use it to promote my podcast. And I do. So yeah, do I want to look my best? Yeah, yeah. I do. I do. And, and so lighting, me. and lighting matters. Yeah, uh, I agree. It's meanwhile, um, I think you're going to really enjoy this product we're going to talk about. Sweet. I got you, Tasha, my essential oils. You did? Yeah, this is for you. That's so sweet. Um, natural habits. Thank you. You know what? I, I am passionate about it. We do have diffusers. I'm uh, really excited about our diffusers. Diffuser line, it's the same brands, R Rise, Protect, Center, and Release. Um, that Those are roll-ons. I really like Tasha, this. thank you. It's sexy um, packaging. No, it really is. I'm all into packaging. It's gender neutral. I designed it myself. Me and my 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 buddy uh, came up with it. Uh, we did this on our own. We came up with the name, and then we came up with the symbols. The idea being that uh, uh, taking really? yourself should be a natural habit. Uh, and those symbols on the packaging are the symbols for rise, protect, center, and release. Um, symbols and that, in what language? Uh, they're. I, they're just like hieroglyphic stuff. They're not a language. Oh, I mean, I really literally, like we just that. kind of Googled yeah. it and, and those cultural, like what came up. Um, anyway, so yeah, natural habits. Uh, we're going to do 30% off again, your entire order. We do um, ship free domestically with any order over $50. Um, so get it now. Should we use a new code? Yeah. What? Uh, code uh, dumped? <laughs> or should be more positive? <laughs> no. Uh, moving on. Code confidence. Ooh, code confidence. Code confidence. <laughs> yes. Really you heard great. it here first. So use code confidence for 30% off uh, free domestic shipping for any order over $50. Um, natural Habits. Find us at nhoils.com. Follow us at Natural Habits on Instagram. And uh, if you are looking for uh, anything to help with sleep aid, anxiety, uh, reduce headaches, um, immunity boost and just mental clarity find us at nhoils.com you had a question you were gonna say oh i want to talk about oh just you painting oh me painting um where did you learn that uh i've always uh i've always liked to paint and the story really is the bob Ross. i've i've always been in decent at art and yeah. i got away from it for a long time and i've always been obsessed with bob ross and I started doing it, to be totally honest, uh, because I'm constantly starving for shit to put on my Instagram because in Bachelor Nation, uh, they want you to have a kid, be in a relationship, be married. I currently have none of those. <laughs> um, so what the hell does a single guy post? And obviously like the cooking with Nick or sometimes the shirtless stuff is an attempt at a self-awareness of like, I don't like constantly doing it, but it's like clearly it gets the attention and I try to have some fun with it. And so I was watching Bob Ross and I thought to myself, I can do this. And so I thought it'd be kind of funny to do it and put it on my social media and, and you know, use it as a platform for people to like watch me paint and tell some stories yeah. and have some fun. So paint therapy, uh, <laughs> join us. Uh, I try to do it every week or every other week, but on some regular basis. So I've given some paintings away to fans for, really? yeah, uh, for promoting uh, Vile Files. <laughs> Look at him. When you, when, if you, yeah, if you post, on. if you post a uh, vial files on your Instagram story and tag us, um, I might be sending you a painting. What? That's right. People, I like that. you heard it here. Um, so, well, Tasha, thanks for, you know, obviously sharing that, that story. And so, um, sucks that he did that, whatever. We don't want to shed more light on it, but I thank you for clearing the air on that. And I personally just don't think that was cool. Um, I understand that people want to speak their truths, but there's a, a more uh, genuine way of, of doing that. Right. So is it safe to say that I'm hearing this, that you still have a very limited dating history 
mm-hmm. post, well, just in general, I guess. Yeah. Yes. Um, because after, so you were married. Mm-hmm. You That was your first boyfriend. You then quickly started dating this cute guy, but hanging out with him. And then you went on the show and then yes. you met Colton, didn't work out. And what, are you back on the market? Are you are you dating? Are you, what's your plan? Are you in love? Do you have news <laughs> to break to our audience? What's up? I'm pregnant. Just kidding. Awesome. <laughs> Just kidding. No. Um, yeah, I guess you can say I'm back on the market. I'm not actively looking. Honestly, I think I just have so much going on. And again, I'm just kind of living my life right now. So where would you say you are now in terms of, so you had divorced and then you were, again, this happened. It sounded like you had a lot of like uh, angst about like getting over rightfully so that the divorce and this guy Uh was, you know, beneficial. Then you went to the bachelor, which is crazy. Do you feel like you're in a great place today in the, like, you seem confident and like you seem very sure of yourself. Is that safe to say that like maybe for the first time you're ready to kind of like your, your options are limitless and you're going to have a ball? I mean, yes, I'm not going to go crazy and start dating everybody in LA or Orange County, but I mean, yeah, I'm excited. Well, what if you did? Uh, it's just not who I am. <laughs> I don't mean like- Okay, I'll tell you this. But, but dating and being open to meeting people without the restrictions of self-judgment, I guess is what I'm saying. In the sense that like, I'm not saying you should hook up. I'm not saying you should go on a multiple dates a week, but you're just open. There's no self like I'm not, I'm not ready or I can't do this because mm-hmm. if you meet someone you're interested in, are you willing to say yes? Yeah. And I think that's the important part of dating. I am, but I'm also very aware of how much time and energy goes into a relationship. And I really don't just date just to date. What do you mean by that? Um... I guess the reason why I did get married to my first boyfriend is because I was very selective on who I really invested my time in. Sure. And I dated with the intention of seeing them in my future and getting married. Mm-hmm. So me right now, I mean, I'll go to dinner with people and I'll talk and I'll meet people, but mm-hmm. I'm not going to continuously talk to you if I really don't see any potential. No, I get that. But like maybe a lot of first dates. Yeah, sure. Or, and the I'm occasional open to that. second date. And then the less occasional third date. Yeah. I, I guess, you know, like, I think, I, I don't know if you're on the same page as me. I've, this is from my point of view. And again, as I've gotten older, I've become, again, we've talked about this, I've become more selective. Yeah. But you also have to shoot to get hot. And and, <laughs> and dating is a contact <laughs> sport figuratively and literally. Mm-hmm. And we, you know, you met your first love when you were younger. Um, I, I'm, are you, do you feel like you're a different person? Your needs have changed? Yeah, I really don't. I'm, I don't take bullshit for, like, I just don't. Sure. I, I guess what I'm saying is like dating there. I think there's nothing wrong with just kind of you maybe to, going out with a handful of dinner dates. I think there's a difference between dating and being open to that mm-hmm. and like not wasting your time by okay uh, getting to know, like, you know, this gentleman that you kind of, and maybe even admit that like you, you were kind of navigating dating for the first time after a divorce. So maybe you enjoyed his company and you invested time in him and realizing maybe you didn't like him. I did. Um, so don't do that, I guess, yeah. right? But I think people could date and just feel it out without the expectations of, you know, like we talked about, is it okay to hook up on the first date? Sure, whatever you want. But if you are going to hook up on the first date and you're going to rush the physical aspect, it, you know, it can complicate things. Yeah. It can put the cart before the horse. It can make you feel like, well, we've had sex. So now I feel like I don't want to get used and I want to set expectations, but you both agree to do this mm-hmm. and neither of you really know each other. Mm-hmm. You may come to find out by date four, you don't stand each other, can't stand each other. So there's that risk, but right. that's fine. I just think, you know, sometimes when we date, we're, a, I hear that a lot. We're like, oh, well, I don't want to waste my time. It's well, how are you going to meet people? Yeah. Honestly, I'm so overwhelmed. I, how do you meet anybody? I don't go on dating apps. Like that scares what do you, me. Why? Uh, first of all, I would much rather meet somebody out in a natural way as opposed to like sure. you judging me off my photos. I don't even take enough photos. I would prefer to- that too. I would love to walk to a grocery store and fall in love in aisle three where we both grab the jar oh of peanut butter at the same time. And like- That'd be the sweetest Sure, thing. I would love that. <laughs> Great. But like we all would. But like that's what I'm saying is like why- like. Fine. That's great. Yeah. But sometimes we have to 
put ourselves out there. I mean, There's a difference between being open to meeting people and enforcing it. Yeah. And I don't think uh, saying yes to the occasional setup, if that's what you want, saying yes to an activity where there might be, an, uh, you, you kind of know that there might be a lot of single people there in the chance of meeting or even going on a dating app. I think there's anything wrong with that. And I don't, I don't think that suggests to anyone that they're forcing it or they're doing things inorganically. I guess you're right. Just opening doors, just opening windows. I mean, I guess you're right. But I feel like people are, I just feel like apps make you so disposable. Like, oh, I like you, but then I also like you, 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 you. Nope, you, you. You know what I mean? Like you're so disposable. Totally. She's not going to text me. Guess what? I got 20 others that do. Like, that no. is a... That is a risk of that. Definitely. That like can that's happen. That's such a, like a playboy. Like I'm not looking for that. I'm sorry. Men and women do it too. It's not. I'm not saying thing. it's just guys. Yes. You're uh, right. But I also think a lot of people can control that on their own. You can't control the guys or, or in your case, the guys or in my case, the, the Good five, one. 10, <laughs> 10 guys that they're talking to plus me, mm -hmm. but we can all limit our own options. Yeah. And I think it starts there. And I think sometimes it's, Listen, and dating apps can be discouraging for that reason. Yeah. I just think in general, like sometimes we can get too hard on ourselves about meeting people because I don't know how you feel because it, I get the sense of like, I, at least for me, okay, I was engaged. I got cheated on. It didn't work out the way I imagined. Yeah. My fairy tale life didn't become a fairy tale. And now I'm trying to fix that fairy tale and create another fairy tale situation so that I don't have to be like, well, I mean, I got engaged and then cheated on and then I slid in her DM and now we're <laughs> dating. And I know that doesn't sound romantic, but like, whatever, she's my girlfriend. You know, right. like it doesn't have to be that. It's just all a matter of perspective. And I, guess you're right. I don't know, like who cares if it's, it, who cares if you don't have the most romantic story? You know, yeah. who cares if you didn't get swept off your feet in a bar with your friends? I don't know. Don't we just want to find people that make us feel good about ourselves and we connect with? I guess actually in your defense, any guy, even that, even if you meet at a bar, could be talking to 10 other girls at a bar. Right. So even a guy who's brazen enough to romantically introduce himself at the produce department <laughs> is also really good at talking to women. Taisha, you went on The Bachelor. He was literally talking I to literally, 12 See, That's girls. not a fair comparison. <laughs> but you're right, you know. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just, uh, I don't know. I hope I'm not giving you too much of a hard time. No, I it's just. Fine. I know growing up in a very traditional family, I set these expectations of myself. I do think some people, I think we all do that a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes we are hard on ourselves about the story and the life that we want to have. And we all want to write our fairy tale story. When it doesn't work that way, sometimes we become even more hard on ourselves. And sometimes if we feel like damaged goods, we're, we, we become less inclined to take more risks at the risks of being more damaged. Right. I mean, here I am, I'm the guy who like, if I tell a story, I could say, I've, uh, I've been engaged twice. I asked two other fathers for their uh, permission. Uh, I went on a reality TV show four times. I, uh, you want to date me? <laughs> you know, like you tell, you tell that story and, I, and, I, and if I say it with a lot of baggage and a lot of angst about my perception of myself, that can sound really unattractive to the literally anyone listening. I have a question with that. So- do you really say that to everyone? I don't say it to anyone. Okay, good. But I'm saying if I were to judge myself and yeah. I were to be hard on myself, which I am, and sometimes I feel that way. Yeah. And then I projected that onto everyone that I went out with. Um, I think I would put more pressure on myself yeah. to try to meet someone in the most organic way possible. So it was like, listen, I did all this, but I didn't force this one. Mm -hmm. She asked me and it was super romantic <laughs> and it was just, and it was all worth this fairy tale. Yeah. And I think sometimes it'd be easy for me to put my pressure on myself as opposed to, yeah, I'm still shooting over here and I'm still, you know, walking up to random women I find attractive and I'm still sliding the occasional DM and I'm just one of these days, I'm going to meet someone and, and maybe it's on a dating app and I'm just going to like, I'm going to try it. I'm not going to judge myself for go, putting myself out there and opening doors when it's there. Um, and hopefully it all works out for me one day. And I've just tried to judge myself less to do that. Yeah. Even though I could easily, and sometimes am, hard on myself. There is that meme that says, um, I'm just waiting for like my Prince Charming to like just knock on my front door because you're just not going to go out there and put yourself out there and you're just expecting them to come to your house. That's not going to happen. Yeah. So I guess I should put myself out there, huh? 
I don't know. It's up to you. I don't, you know, um, okay. I do you feel like women, Rochelle, uh, Tisha, do you feel like, you know, here I am saying this, do you think women even find it, are, there's a greater expectation even for men because it's okay for men to pursue the perception of the traditional, like, yeah, yeah guys are going to slide in DMs and they can do all the things. But do you think it's even harder for women to, or easier for women to judge themselves at the fear of other people judging them? I mean... All I know is I get like five emails a day of women asking you out via our email address. So I don't what? know if women seem to be doing it. They seem to be shooting their shot. Yeah. I don't personally, I personally I don't feel hard. it's hard for me. To yeah, do I agree. I don't mean like, hard, but just like the, the judgment of, uh, of like if, someone being like, she's the one that slid into my DMs or, or just like the, the baggage of, of if do, do you think, uh, women feel m more like if a guy's had a failed relationship, do you think, I don't, do, I don't know. Do you feel like that hap Do you think women have more pressure than men or no? Or do you think that's equal? I don't think so. Okay. I, I don't think so. That's great news. <laughs> I don't know. It was just more like I, you know, sometimes I think sometimes we can be superficial sometimes all of us. Well, yeah. We list. So well, I don't want someone who's like, you know, the whole kid thing or being whatever it is, right. or God forbid you're like, some, you know, I don't want someone who you know, even engaged. You've been engaged twice. Really? <laughs> oh, well, won't I feel special if I'm the one, you know, like <laughs> there's that fear of that perception of that person feeling like that. Yeah. I yeah. Don't know. But I, think, I guess at the same time, like all of your baggage is out there. So. Yeah. Well, I guess that my point of all of this is that we all have baggage yeah. and uh, I, I, strongly feel that our, our baggage is heavier in the heaviest when we make it the heaviest. And uh, oftentimes we, we judge ourselves way more than other people uh, judge us. Mm -hmm. And we all have, everyone has baggage and it may not be divorce and it may not be, not that kids are baggage, kids or being cheated on or being engaged. We all have some sort of version of us. And I, quite honestly, if we don't, if you don't, I'm, I'm more nervous about dating you because you haven't really lived Life. a real life and you haven't mm -hmm. faced adversity. And I don't know, I don't want to be the first time, I don't want to be the first person you face adversity with because I've done that and it hasn't worked out. And right. my biggest challenge in my relationships is uh, being on the same page when dealing with adversity. It wasn't how much fun we had when we had, had fun. It was our inability to communicate effectively when we face adversity. Right. And so I need to know that we can, we can handle that together. So yeah, I don't know. I, uh, I and that's really important to keep a marriage going. Just so you know, what is this? I, I just thought it was really interesting. There's this uh, article in the New York Times about uh, the the millennial generation or whatever. I just think nowadays people uh, they're getting married uh, later in life. Um, mm -hmm. I kind of feel like that's good. Um, it's just we have such a different world now, and the expectation of settling down um, when you meet your first person. I, you know, we're for better or worse, we're just maturing later in life. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think 30 years ago, uh, 20, 22 year olds and 21 year olds, 23 year olds were more adults than 23 year olds are today. I completely agree. They had more responsibility. You know, it just was normal to like have kids and a mortgage at 22. And yeah. now, if you're like, you meet someone who's like 22, they're like, yeah, I'm got my 401k, my mortgage. I was like, damn, <laughs> like, <laughs> who look at you? you. <laughs> yeah. Right. And so, um, I, yeah, it's, uh, to me, this is kind of like, I'm glad. I think it's, I mean, I think it's good. I think when you're in your twenties, you really should be living your life and you should be experiencing everything that you can. Yeah. I, you know, I, my first love there, there were definitely, I was, I think about this a lot, you know, we, we were a great girl, but like there was, a, I was very close to of asking, I didn't, we didn't ever get engaged, but there's a couple moments that my life could have drastically changed and we could have gotten engaged and married and had kids. And, and I could have been a dad at 25, which would have been great, you know, if I was a dad. But, like, I would, my life would be drastically different. Mm -hmm. I don't think deep down I would have been happy with my life. And because while she's great, I don't think, you know, she was my person. But, man, I, I think about how close I got to getting engaged that quickly. And a lot of it was based off of, well, I think this is the next step. I, I'm, I think I'm supposed to do this. I mm -hmm. think. And I think now it's a little bit better that we're waiting because we're, we're more comfortable and maybe it is a little selfishness, mm -hmm. but it's better to get, you know, to get, you know, yourself and be selfish early in your life so that you can 
be more giving and less selfish. I think as we get older, I agree. I mean, um, what if like you're dating when you're younger and then you figure out, I don't know, you guys just, your interests change. You change. You just. Uh, yeah. I think more people change drastically as people between in their twenties than they do in their thirties or forties. Yeah. Um, and I think maybe, you know, I have a brother who got divorced and he got married very early. Like you just, you're just like, we are different people. Mm -hmm. And there's a challenge too sometimes of like that commitment of till death do a part or do I like, do I leave? I mean, infidelity is a whole nother issue. Um, and like if someone steps out, it's like you're, you're helpless to the decisions they right. make. But uh, I think sometimes you're just, you you can rush into things even if you don't get married realize that like we're just I, you, I care about you but we're not we want different things and I've always d desired to be in a big city my first girlfriend I mean she still lives in the same neighborhood she grew up in and that's great and that's what she will always wanted and I think that's what made her happy and that wasn't me and that that can you know. I mean differences are fine like I one of my best friends and her husband there different spectrums. Like one loves to like go out and she likes to drink and have fun with me and her husband's a straight edge. So it's like you just find the balance. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You 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 can get through it, but you just have to be on the same wavelength. Totally. I was talking to someone the other day who married her first love and they seem to have a great marriage, mm -hmm. but she recognizes they both drastically changed, but she also recognized that she's very fortunate they grew together. Yeah. And that, there was no guarantees. Now, part of it is maybe I think they made the commitment to do that and they, they chose each other first, but I think sometimes you'd also realize that, yep, we still like a, a lot of, the, we have a lot of the same interest and mm -hmm. so that, you know, and we're willing to make certain sacrifices where there's not similarities. But sometimes that's not the case. Don't. Tisha, was there a religious aspect that me? that was made you feel like you should get married younger? Um, no. 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 I mean, the religious aspect of my relationship was that we should stay married and uh -huh. fight for it. So maybe that's where some of the shame came in. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I mean, I, like I said, I don't know if I told you guys, but in a previous interview, I probably told about, 10, 15 people and that's family and friends included that I got a divorce. I just kind of let everybody else figure it out. Hmm. Yeah. I think that's common. You, you know, know what I mean? That, yeah. No, totally. I mean, again, not the I same as before, ashamed. but I, when I was engaged in cheating, I was like, I just don't want anyone to know. Oh no, no. You know, I told maybe my therapist, my parents and my best friend that I was cheated on. So <sighs> I have a, one last question about this before we get into questions with fans, but he was unfaithful. That mm -hmm. sucks. You were willing to make it work. And that's awesome. Now that you're divorced and you look back, mm -hmm. not that we want to give him any points for leaving, but do you, do you, are you glad it worked out the way it did? Do you think it minus the infidels, infidelity could have been salvaged? Are you disappointed that he quit so easily? Or like, what is your, how do you feel about it now? Um, I have mixed emotions. Not that I'm not, I haven't moved on, but we were a very good team and, um, you know, I think we, he rushed into a decision. Mm -hmm. It definitely could have been worked, th like worked through. Um, but I'm, I'm content with how my life is now. I think I definitely wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have done what I just did. I, I'm more myself now than I was in that relationship. I think I lost myself quite a bit. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm fortunate. I think if everything happened the way it was supposed to, as hard and as much as it hurt, well, I'm happy. I, I really appreciate you sharing that with me. And man, and like that's, relationships are muddy, and they can obviously have such a huge impact on our lives. And there's always this struggle of uh, being quote unquote selfish and meeting your needs, or changing for the relationship only to lose yourself. And yeah, um, I mean it's it can be muddy. I hope. I think my biggest takeaway or what I ho hope to accomplish in this episode, and I hope people feel like we did, is that um, we are going to all fuck up and fail and things aren't going to work out the way we hoped, but that's okay. Yeah. I mean, you never know. It, especially going through my divorce, I thought that it was, like, I didn't see any positives or I didn't see a light at the tunnel. I thought I was going to be in, like, this huge depression for quite some time, and I've never been happier. Awesome. Right you look, you're, you're, you seem to be glowing. You seem to be in a great Thank spot. You. So, 
Okay, so Nick, we've been getting a lot of questions about divorce, actually. And some people are asking, you know, if you've been in something for eight years and you realize you're not very compatible or you're not feeling like you're growing or learning, is it better to stay and fight for the marriage or is it better to, you know, try and get out and see how happy you could be without them? I mean, that's tough. Tasha. what are, I mean, what are your thoughts in the sense that I know you mentioned you didn't want to get divorced mm-hmm. and you made this promise and you wanted to work for it. What's, I don't know if there is a right or wrong answer, but what is your two cents on, on that? I mean, in- I mean, I think that there are acceptable reasons to get a divorce, such as infidelity or being in an abusive relationship. Mm-hmm. But if it's things that can be worked on, I don't think that divorce should be one of the first things that pop in your head. Mm-hmm. I think you should honestly give it a solid effort and try as much as you possibly can. Just And just because you try for like three months doesn't mean, okay, cool, I've done everything. Sure. But you need to give it some time. Um, but that's just like my personal opinion. Um, incompatibility or um, you don't feel like they're your number one support. I just feel like there are things you can do to work on that. Work on communication. Mm-hmm. Um, go do activities together. There's obviously a reason why you guys were together for so long already. So try to revisit those things. Yeah. I mean, it's it's sometimes tough if like if if one person's not willing. Oh, if you're yeah. like, if two people are just struggling, then, you know, because there's things you can do like therapy. Right. Um and, you know, and again, if you're younger, I think there is a challenge, right? If the, when you get, we talked about this, when you get married young, mm-hmm. you're going to change. And I think if you are going to get married young, would you agree that like you kind of have to acknowledge that? And maybe that's what people aren't doing these days is acknowledge that if we're going to get married young, we need to be willing to grow together. Mm-hmm. Because... Yeah, people you know, just kind of like just jump into it, like like how we've been saying it's the next thing to do. Would you have done something differently? Hindsight being twenty twenty, um, and yeah, you can't control what he did or his actions. But if you knew how things played out, would you have had a conversation as a couple before saying, "All right, we're going to move, and we need to make sure that we we protect our relationship." You yes, know, uh, I would have done some. There's a few things that I would have done differently. Okay. Um, I think that some of the issues that we did have, we were both embarrassed about and we didn't really talk to anybody else about it. Can you, are you able to? I mean, it's just, I don't know, just like normal fights that people have in marriage. Sure. Um, but um, yeah, I feel like if I would have even talked to my parents about like, hey, you know, he's doing X, Y, and Z. How do I go about it as opposed to just shutting down and basically causing a huge issue and then sweeping it under the rug and just creating more problems? Um, so I, you felt like you both did that with each other? Yeah. Okay. And you know, I what think, would you what would you do now? What would you tell uh, the younger Tasha about that for people who might be listening who feel like they can relate to you? Um, go to therapy. Number one, premarital counseling is very very important. Um, and I also think that you don't, you can't figure it all out on your own and you actually find out that a lot of the problems that you have, a thousand other relationships have the same thing. Yeah. And you're just embarrassed by it. Whether it be with intimacy, whether it be with, um, compatibility, there's a lot of things. I don't know. No, I think that's very helpful. I mean, it's, it's interesting to hear for someone who's been married uh, a fear of communicating and still talking through things. Yes. Maybe people take that for granted in marriages. Uh, and so, no, I mean, I think that's really helpful. Yeah. And that's, that's, I'm just kind of fascinated. And I think that's great. Just, uh, and I, and I'm now I'm thinking about it. A lot of people, you know, maybe is it the pressure of, well, we're married and we should feel a certain way. And yeah. We shouldn't have certain fights mm-hmm. and it should be fine because we're married. Right. Everything should be great. Dandy. Um, and the acknowledgement that even though, I know my parents taught me this, even though I haven't been married, is that, haven't been married, is that it can get really difficult and, and there's not good months or bad months. There might be sometimes bad years. Mm-hmm. Maybe there's a, a challenge there. and um, But you always need to be both hopefully willing to, to, work, on to it. work on it. And that's a challenge. There's, it, there is that balance, right? I don't know what you think, but, you know, there's like, wh- where's, what's the breaking point? 
back in the day, you got married and you stayed married. Right. Divorce wasn't as accepted. Mm -hmm. uh, but people seemed to be more unhappy because they were stuck in situations they didn't get out of. And instead of fixing it, people just kind of secretly were in like cheated or stuff like that. And now it's almost the opposite where people are quitting way too early. Right. Do you feel that way? I or mean, yeah, I think a divorce, the word and just we're going to get a divorce is just thrown out there so lightly. Like it's like the first thing you do instead of being like, let's work on this. Let's go to therapy. Let's figure it out. Like this wasn't all, you know, magic and roses. So yeah. I guess we should get divorced. Yeah. Like it should be like your last resort. Yeah, which sometimes I think can can happen too. I mean, but also yeah. people are just yeah. I don't think people think about things before they're getting married as well. That's why I think premarital counseling is very important. I think that's it's really I that's really great feedback. I think sometimes I know I even I felt this way when I was younger. But sometimes, well, we're not even married yet. Why should we get therapy? Right. Like, I don't know why people if have we're such getting a therapy negative now, connotation on therapy. Um, it's so good for you. Yeah. Like I don't see a negative side to it. Or not even therapy, just the idea that even if you're not married yet, you're going to have maybe communication issues. Right. And maybe you haven't figured it all out. And if you are younger, it's going to evolve and change and you need to know how to do that so that you're not waiting to figure it out once you have exactly. problems. Exactly. Wouldn't you like to like work through those problems before you get in your marriage and realize like, you know what? This is a deal breaker. Like I don't want to be with you anymore. You know what I mean? Like when you're dating, wouldn't that be nice to work through those issues? Uh, yeah. Way before. Um, yeah, that that's that is very. That's uh, hopefully very helpful to the to the people listening. I, I mean, again, I've never been married, but I find that to be something I don't think about, or, or we should all you know take into consideration uh, mm -hmm. whether it's a marriage or a long term relationship. Is that you know, again? Some dating's hard. I mean, how many times have we had conversations, whether it's in a relationship or not, where you you get worried about saying something, you get worried about saying it, and, you're, and you say it, and then you, the response is like kind of fine. You're like, I just feel a lot better now. <laughs> um, right? Do we not? Yeah. And it's, I don't know. I mean, in relationships, and it seems like maybe even- In a healthy relationship, you should be able to bring up anything. Yeah. But and it, talk about anything. We sometimes don't, I guess. Um, cool. Uh, well, that's, that's really interesting. Okay. So- I just have never employed you as a dating coach. Not saying that you're a dating coach, but have I ever asked you for advice? No. <laughs> no. Can I do that? Yeah. Okay. I'm flattered. <laughs> uh, Tasha, Ro Rochelle's and I's relationship is touch and go. It's, <laughs> All right. It's, we, you know. <laughs> so I'm flattered. I'm excited. I'm excited to hear this story. Well, okay. This is my problem. Well, the whole commitment thing. I don't know if it's an LA thing or if it's a me thing, probably a me thing, but I always feel like, okay, you wait two or three months before you can really be like, is this going anywhere? Do you think we could be together? Is that true? Uh, it has to be two or three months? Yeah. You have to like wait. I think there's a lot of variables. Do you have a specific situation where you... Well, okay. So I always have been waiting and then they're always like, oh, actually I'm not looking for a relationship. And I'm like, okay, so I've just invested oh. all this time. Why right? are you doing that? Why am I doing what? Waiting. Do yes. You... I've been trying to be cool. Right. Okay. So you're... then I stopped being cool. And you're I'm like... here every week, Rochelle, and we get all these callers and I constantly <laughs> am telling people like, stop worrying about being cool. Okay. Well, I'm trying different tactics because nothing is working. Do you understand that? Sure. Okay. Do you have a, is, yeah, is there so, a guy so, you're hanging out with? Yes. Yeah, so, okay. okay. I decided instead of being cool, I'm going to just be upfront mm -hmm. <laughs> about asking. How long have you been dating this guy? Uh, it was since we met on New Year's. Huh. Yeah. Oh. Did you I kiss? know, sexy. Did you kiss? Okay. Yes. <laughs> did you kiss? Did you kiss? Did you kiss? <laughs> yes, we definitely did. Uh, definitely. Yes. Yes. And it was good. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How many bases? Oh, okay. Let's just say it all. It yeah. was, I wasn't planning on a thing, no, okay, it, but it so, just kept going because of good. So chemistry. physically you got to yeah. win quick. Yeah. And then sometimes so, so, then, well, I've and done then that. we would go on dates and he met my roommate, he met my friends and all blah, 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 blah. Okay. This is embarrassing. <laughs> now I'm getting red. Listen, <laughs> I, then I, I just said, is, do you, this is the words I said, which is embarrassing. I go, do you care about me or is, are you just hooking up? And then he goes, oh, we're just hooking up. And he goes, I'm not going to feel bad about it. 
Wait, when was this? Wait. Abort when did you ask mission. him? What do you mean when? <laughs> so you met on New Year's Eve. That, and then we've been da- dating. You've been since. hanging out. Yeah. But you, you hooked up on New Year's Eve. Yeah. And since then you've been hanging out. Yeah. And I'm assuming still rounding all the bases from time yeah, to yeah, time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I oh like, God. I like, uh, baseball terms. Well, or just like, you know, we, <laughs> like we, the specifics. we all know what we're talking about, okay. but it's just more fun. Um, and you probably, so you like him. Well, I liked him fine. When you met him after you hooked up. Yeah. Regardless of what he thought about you, did you like him? I, I did. I thought, yeah, yeah I, okay. but I wasn't like, oh my God. Yeah, you were interested in pursuing your relationship. Yeah, but I was like, he should feel going to be with me, to be honest. Like really? I had that kind of an attitude. And then I was like, oh, when he said that, I was like, okay. I mean, I mean, the person you date should definitely feel that way. I do find you're, you're I, I hear so many of our callers too. And then when questions with Nick, it's, I'm, it's so many people worried about whether they like they're like they're being liked before oh. they think about how much they like there's so that true. There, there's that fear of like well I mean I guess I like them but do they like me yeah and right and yeah. so so he was honest yeah. until he asked I mean listen I so <laughs> what was he doing about what were you doing in between we like going on dates you yeah mean? like yeah. were you was it casual it was it casual each other every day. It was like once a week. So that's casual. And you were once a week? Yeah. Was there communication throughout the week? Yeah. Was it always instigated by you? Uh, like good yeah. morning texts. Not Did that that necessarily them? matters. I'm just. No, yeah. I'm saying that obviously he wasn't interested in. And then you finally asked yeah. recently. And he said, I'm not going to feel bad about it. <laughs> that's kind of a dick thing to right? say. Anyway. I, I, I. I I, I I can't I have <laughs> I've hooked up with people who and I realize after we hook up like or even before like this is probably not going to be my person. Yeah. I am very self-conscious uh, about not putting myself in a situation where I'm leading someone on. So yeah. I very quickly set the an, an upfront expectation mm-hmm. about like where this could be going or not mm-hmm. very like either before or immediately or not like immediately after yeah but like and i don't wait for them to ask you uh, don't do they get sad when you tell them well this all depends if it's they early on i think you know sometimes and we talked about this you know if it's someone who's like younger than me and like maybe 24 25 i don't know where they are in their life and so it's kind of like you know my my own I, I want to have kids mm-hmm. and I want to be in a relationship where it's a possibility, you know, where I'm not saying like, I want to have kids tomorrow, but I want to be in a relationship where that person is also ready to have kids if the situation's right. And I think sometimes that's kind of my out. Oh, It's like, hey, you seem like you have a lot in front of you oh and maybe you don't want to, I don't say it like that, but that's <laughs> kind of the, um, but I, do, I think if a guy is going to hook up with you for three straight months yeah. and then leave it to you to finally ask right? and then so abruptly be like, I mean, it sounds like he said it so uh, with no consideration for how right. you might be feeling. Right. Yeah. I feel uh, like you might have known. Well, obviously, yeah. I so did if I that's asked. That's how you asked. Yeah. That's also right. like. So you kind of just got the answer that you want. Yeah. That you were expecting. But was there, was there a. Again, I'm just thinking about my situation. Sometimes it doesn't come up. Sometimes there's like, I was, I mean, not to <laughs> this, this, this young lady. And we still kind of hang out from time to time. And she's, she's, I actually, kinda she's, hang out. she's really, she, she doesn't even live here. She lives in another city. Uh, but when she's in town, she lets me know when I'm in town, I let her know. We go out and we have fun and, and we never really talked about dating. Yeah. And I think sometimes with me, and we'll get into this. I think part of this episode is talking about like baggage or uh, what perceptions of us. And I think sometimes I get insecure about perceptions people have of me or being old. Like, do you even want to settle down? Like, you know, people just might assume I'm just some fuck boy who doesn't want to date. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of women who date me early on, that's a question I get often. Is like, do you even really want a girlfriend? Um, and sometimes... I don't want to say I use it to my advantage, but like, I think if I'm not, 
if I don't think there's going to be a relationship there, um, I know that they just might assume, they just assume this is not going to be something. So like with this particular person I'm dating, there's clearly like this, we both know. Mutual understanding. There's this mutual, and yeah. she even jokes about it. One time I was in New York and we had, we've hung, I've known her for like five, five months now. Um, and she, she's 25. So like, you know, right around that, like, maybe, I don't know, but like, you know, I, I, yeah, anyways. Um, but I don't know, we haven't really talked about it. And we were out to dinner and I was in New York and she just goes, I think we should date. <gasps> then I, I was caught off guard and I know she has a dry sense of humor. I know she's really like, she's very sarcastic, which I like about her, and yeah. she, but just deadpan. I think we should date. And I, I kind of, I'm eating ramen and I'm just like, um, I'm really caught off guard. I didn't know if she was joking. She was, she really sold it. And I, my first thought, like, well, I, uh, I mean, we live like in <gasps> different parts of the country and without hesitation, she looks at me and goes, I'll move. Dead serious. Wow. And I was like, <laughs> uh, uh, and then like, she let it settle. Like she let it marinate for like two minutes. And then she's like, I'm just fucking with you. Um, I don't know if she was. Yeah, maybe she I I think, think she was. Like, I think there's a part, yeah, I think there's a wasn't. part is testing me in her own way. I yeah. also think, but I'm, what I'm saying is she definitely knows that uh, this, like she knows we're thinking, there's, I don't think we're confused about like, she's not wondering if right now we just kind of hook up. And what I'm saying is things can change in that situation. And then like, you know, that can happen. We're like, I feel like we've just been hooking up, but I'll be honest, I kind of want more. I'm mm -hmm, interested in having right. more. And then you can do that, but you weren't even there. You were just like, I don't even know if we're hooking up or I'm, or, or we're moving, we're progressing into something. Yeah. And I think, I, I just don't know why people, I guess what I'm saying, I don't know why people wait so long. And I don't think you should ever wait. I don't think anyone should wait. I think at the time, if you're having sex with someone, I think you immediately have the right to get a clear understanding of what that relationship is. Even if it's the next, if you hook up the first day. I agree. But don't you feel like that's when they start calling girls crazy when I, you ask that? Yeah, but it, it, then they're, they don't have real intentions. Like it, they're, they're just looking to hook up with is, people. May I, may I offer some without mansplaining? I, no, I've like, literally asked you I'm, for I'm advice. I'm just making sure. Um, I don't <laughs> think when you ask the question, I think your phrasing could be a yeah. little better. It do gave you care, all my power away. Do you care is about you me? Is, it's so bad. It's a little- It's so bad. It's a little like- Oh God, I know. It puts it really puts a guy in the spot. I know. Um, You're right. And I'm, listen, there's nothing, I, I do think in general, there's nothing, like say what you want. If Say how, say how you feel. If you're- oh. If you're sleeping with someone, I think men and women have every right to ask whatever question they want about their standing. Okay. I think agreed. might be a slightly softer way <laughs> yes. of saying it yeah. than do you you're care right. about me? Are we or are we just fucking? <laughs> well, at least I admitted I actually said that because that is embarrassing. That's totally honest. I yeah. really appreciate you sharing that. Uh, I yeah, think maybe, maybe just kind of like wrong. Yeah, that's where it went wrong. I do think, and I said this on Nikki Glazer's show, I think you talk about power. Yeah. I think, and this is a little bit of a manipulation. But I think women, if you, in this situation, if you find yourself in the situation, I think you should, instead of being like, oh, do you care about me? You should say, hey, listen, buddy. <laughs> um, buddy. I already like this. Whatever already. his name is. Um, I, I like you. And in fact, I even quite enjoy having sex with you. <laughs> and I would, uh, I would be open to dating. But honestly, I feel like this is, you're not, I think you're kind of, you're probably a fuck boy. And that's fine. <gasps> that's totally you cool. I think I should say Absolutely. that? Absolutely. And I think you should, I and I think what? like, it just seems like you're maybe not ready for a relationship. And I think you just kind of want to fuck around. And that's cool. But like, I, I do want a relationship. And so I think maybe we should just time this out because it's just not what I want. And I've had some fun. It's been really good. <laughs> and I'm, you know, I'm maybe opening it. I'm not saying I'm shutting it down. I love but the acting you you're just doing seem, right now. You seem like <laughs> a guy, yeah. you just seem like a guy who's, and then you're inserting all your power I'm, at the same time, vetting out what his interest is. Because I can assure you, every guy is going to be like, well, I mean, exactly. I feel like I, you know I mean, why? I don't know. I don't, I, I'd like to introduce him to my parents this Saturday, if, if, if you don't mind. <laughs> um, no, I mean, every time I, listen, it's every time I'm dating, and even early on, even if I don't think that a girl is my person and we're hooking up and she's like, you don't want a girlfriend, do you? And I do want a girlfriend, I do, right? But I there's a little bit of a neg there in terms of like, 
questioning my intentions. Yeah. Um, and I think, I think if you do that, uh, there's a there's a risk of manipulation in the sense that you might be getting a guy to try to prove to you that he's not a fuck boy, only to then right. prove to you. So I think you need to vet that out. But I I think that's a better option of asserting your power and just saying, stating what you want. Yeah. This is what I want. I don't think you do. Yeah. You have to be confident about it. And you you were asking for like if you were desirable. I basically. know, I really did. You need to know that oh, and just God. be like, listen, I, right? you're missing out. I think that's so great feedback. It is what it is. You're missing out. Um, it's kind of that hey, same. Buddy, you're missing you're out. Not, okay. Whoa. <laughs> I think you should sound borderline indifferent. I agree. Yeah. Just be like, hey man, listen, I, have I know some- I'm busy. I'm I got this. Yes hit podcast I'm yes. producing. I'm a stand-up comedian. I got a bunch of other shit. And you're cool, but like, I just don't have the time to deal with yeah. your shit. Exactly. And if you want to like explore, and maybe I'm wrong. I could be wrong. I've been wrong before. But if I am, let me know. Otherwise, maybe we should just slow it down or I don't know, like <laughs> kind of over it. And that's not crazy at all. That's it's also true. true. It's, it's literally true. Yeah, you're right. You know what I mean? That's how to not be You're crazy. saying it in a totally different way because I, I totally agree with Taisha. We're like, it's that same thing where like, if you're dating someone and you're like, I don't know if I'm good enough for you. Or like, I don't know if I'm right. good enough. When people say that, if you're dating someone, you're saying that, that person dating you who thinks you're totally adequate for them starts to be like- You start second guessing it. I don't like, know, maybe you're not. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. That, uh, maybe you're right. <laughs> I really do not appreciate you uh, being five minutes late. Uh, I feel like I can find a more tardy person. Uh, more tardy? I don't know. But like, I'm just saying like you, uh, if you start, you kind of act as if, I think. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'll try that out. I'll memorize that I mean, script. just as much as you want a guy that's confident and sexy and cool, I have to, to be, be that. that. Oh, God. How you do know? you get some confidence? Oh, act take it, it till you make it, baby. It, yes. All right. Thank yeah, you. I appreciate true. My session is now over. Can we get it? Uh, I want, I want uh, uh, updates on this. Me too. Um, I think all you're, do- uh, you're, all you're doing is just changing how you're saying it. Yeah. I do think if a guy heard, do you care about me? With a voice of, you're not sure if you do, a guy immediately is like, oh, maybe I don't. <laughs> like, do you remember that movie? It sounds like a burden. That Disney movie with all the, like, the characters, like there's happy, there's sadness, and there's- the Oh, movie. yeah, Inside Out. Yeah, favorite movie. But it, when you said that, you remind me of sadness. Like, do you care about me? You know what I mean? Yes. Like, you know, you're yes. just like, Meh. yeah. You want to be like, for I sure. Because I think all, I think all men are like, you know, if you're unsure about mm-hmm. like you're dating someone and you're like, it, it, it's, I don't, I, it's kind of I, when I'm thinking, it sounds bad, but it's just like, if if it's organic and you're just like, I'm just, oh, babe, oh, I'm just I'm digging this girl, and I'm excited. But a lot of, especially nowadays, a lot of dating is like, I don't know, yeah. you know, like, and then I'm girls like, do you care? About, it sounds like almost like a responsibility of like, yeah. She really likes me and I think I like her, but like if I hurt her feelings, I'm an asshole. So like, yeah, I'm just going to yeah, like, yeah. you kind of set that up a little bit. I did. You don't I also get an think, authentic all right, answer. All right. I get it. I messed up. <laughs> okay. We no, did it. It's fine. But I do think this guy's response was totally shitty. I agree. And completely uh, uh, lacking of empathy for your situation. And so like, yeah, yeah. I, I don't feel bad. I didn't ask you if you felt bad. I, know, I just like, asked oh, you what we great. were. Now I'll be able to sleep at night as long as you don't he got, feel bad. He got defensive. Yeah. Oh, but now it's on you. I think you should stop sleeping with him. Question. Oh, did, I'm not. Did anymore. you cut it off completely? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank God. Thank God. I've finally bye. learned how to do that. Boy, bye. Also. I did try one more time. No. <laughs> I just remember. If you really with shut him? it off, yeah, if no. you really shut it off, you're going to hear from him again. <laughs> Text me next time, please. Abort mission. Abort. Okay. If you hear from Enough him about me. If you hear from him again, Rochelle, if he like chimes in and is like, hey, do you want to like get coffee? I've been thinking about you. You're like, oh, I'm really busy. Yeah. I agree. And you say, listen, I think it's great. I'm just kind of busy. And this is, you know, yeah. even if you've, I don't, you probably haven't changed. You probably have thought you have. It's okay. People don't change. And you don't. I honestly. Yeah. Because Not that you're trying to play games, but like he already showed his true colors. Like, yeah. You're over Showed it. And you don't want to run the risk of hearing from a guy because he's bored. Yeah. Um, well, thanks for sharing that, Rochelle. How are you guys? Doing so I'm great. good. How are you? What's your name? Victoria. Hi, Victoria. I'm Nick. Hello. This is Tasha. Hi. Hello. How's your day going? It's going well. Great. It's, uh, yeah, going well. Are you driving? Where are you driving to? <laughs> no, I just stepped out of the office. So. Oh, awesome. Well, thanks for taking the time. How can uh, we help? What's your question? 
All right. So I have a question. I guess this is kind of geared towards Nick, but I'd appreciate all input. Um, I feel like in the past, I've always had relationships where they're into like strong willed and like opinionated women, Mm -hmm. which is great. Um, But then like time goes on and I feel like eventually it becomes a point of like contention in the relationship where it's, um, you know, they feel like um, I'm either like cold to them or they get upset with like when I kind of have my own things going on. And um, it seems like it's really hard to depict when a guy really is okay with an independent, like strong person versus just the idea of like having a badass, like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Do you have a specific (laughs) example or a guy you're hanging out with now that's, um, well, my last, the last guy I dated, um, he, you know, it would, it would always be like, oh, I love that you don't take bullshit from anyone. Cause I, you know, I am very outspoken and, um, I like, I'm not afraid to take the initiative to do things, but it seems like all the time that transpired into me making decisions about everything. So whether that be like dating um, like where to go, what to do, or when there were decisions that need to be made about like events or even like, um, more so like about the like emotional aspect of things and, um, you know, like the physical aspect of things. Like it almost seemed like it was more intimidating for him and he wasn't okay with it. So, you did, know, did he say that or you felt that? Um, no, he, <laughs> He would always say, like, you know, that's what he likes about me, that, like, I'm not afraid to say and do what I want. But it always felt like it came off more as it became, like, an insecurity of his. And he kind of just, like, took a step back. And I ended up just ending things because it seemed like uh, it just, like, something was missing. I guess I'm curious um, if you sense this or, like, this became a thing you talked about. When you say the you, did he voice his insecurity or, or is no, he's not no. You just kind of felt it, what, because yeah, he was starting to like, pull away because um, he was like not pissed off, but no, he, he was not the type to get pissed off. But it's like, um, like I I travel a lot. I go out with my girlfriends. Like we um, we run like all fifty states and stuff. So a lot of times it would be like, oh well, you know I going out of town for a couple days or whatever and you know it's like you fly comments here and there and it's it's very hard to like just depict whether or not a guy is okay with like me having my own life and that's like something that's super important to me Mm -hmm. um so it seems like up front it's like yeah yeah i love that you have your own life you have like your own friends this that the other and then it turns into like not not resentment but um like a a point of like argument, I guess. Sure. Do you, have you ever felt like this with God? I mean, you, I don't know you that well, but you seem like you're also a strong, you know, no self-assured person who knows what they want. Um, well, yeah, I feel like in my marriage, my husband had, um, his own business. So I think he also required me to have my own independence and be as ambitious and want to do something successful for myself as as well. So, and then when I did quit my job, I think that there was tension at that point because I didn't have, I wasn't going to work at the same time he was. And he was like, well, I'm going to go to work now and you're just going to stay home. You know what I mean? It's I get how guys can want that, but then they kind of resent you when you are at work all the time or you are leaving. It's definitely like he, he, I, I hate to say he, because like, I don't want to use a specific person because I feel like this has been, uh, you know, it's an issue um, that I feel like comes up often. It's like, where, how, how can you really tell that a guy is okay with having someone that's like independent and really just does their own thing, but that doesn't necessarily mean like they need to let you make all decisions and like, you know, take a step back. Yeah. I mean, I, I hear this a lot too. And I think sometimes, I mean, I guess is, um, 
a guy can like the idea of a strong independent woman um and then and maybe not be okay with it maybe not sh- sure it sounds like you were doing your thing and instead of him, maybe him communicating something that was bothering him he was just kind of passive aggressive and would make little comments and that they would irritate you and like anything any times that happens in a relationship that just kind of builds up to like there's tension there and there's some yeah. you guys you guys both feel but you're not talking about it right I think sometimes when that happens, we start uh, making assumptions about what the other people are thinking and feeling. Um, so there could be that. Um, and also in this sense, like uh, I, I don't think any person or woman should ever be discouraged about being who they are. And if you, you know, strong, independent, fine. Like, you know, sometimes I think almost like we make too big of a deal about labeling a woman as strong as independent is like, that's like a thing. Right. It's like, <laughs> you know, like you're just, yeah. you're just someone who knows what they want and that's great. And you should just do that. And I don't think you or any other woman should be some sort of novelty because you're a confident person. <laughs> um, so I don't think with that being said, you should ever wonder or be like disappointed that you are that way at the risk of guys not being Definitely into you. Definitely not. How old are you? 28. Okay, so yeah, I mean, how how old is he? He is 29. Okay. Um, Maybe you should look for like an older guy that kind of just, I don't know, has a little bit more on his plate. Like is, (laughs) yeah, I mean, mean? that's the, yeah, I think Because if he's too available, obviously he's going to think that you're like, well, why are you gone all the time? You know what I mean? Like if he's just at home, he- doesn't really have much going. Do you have more things going on than him? Or did you? Yeah, like he he works at night, so I feel like that really oh, There you uh, go. That's a little tough, but also I think, you know, I look back and and I think it was just like a difference in personalities. I we had different like goals and stuff. Really really nice guy, but it's just I think different. Um but I feel like a lot of times it's super easy for a like a girl to be labeled as a bitch if like she's outspoken and just like really wants, uh, like I tried to bring things up with him and say, but he just like wasn't getting it. And what, so do, you, I what do you mean? Do you have an example? What bringing things up with yeah, him? Yeah, like what did you bring up that he didn't get? Well, I, you know, okay. So for example, I see no problem. Like he had plans to go, uh, his friends wanted him to go to Chicago for, um, uh, like I don't know some weekend or whatever and I was like oh why don't you go he saw like an issue with me not having a problem with him going like by weekend and I, like I already had plans of my own I don't um you know it uh, he wanted you almost to be jealous yeah yeah and it's like mm. I'm not yeah I, per, I guess yeah I mean people wanted- do, yeah people do that in relationships it's definitely a red flag it's a sign of immaturity uh, it's surprising that someone who's 29 gets that way. I think that's common for, um, I mean, I know I did when I, like, it's common, I think when people first started dating, yeah. um, the idea of, I mean, I, I had a lot of immature thoughts when I was young, but like, we're supposed to be so in love that we're supposed to do things together. And the expectations we put on ourselves of like, well, that's a, something we do when we're young. He's 29, it's yeah. but it's definitely, it's, it's a sign of immaturity and insecurity in this point uh, at that, at, at, at in, and I guess it has nothing to do with you being a strong no, woman. No, not at all. Um, I don't, I also yeah, think, I yeah, it's a compatibility thing. I think sometimes I hear that when, when women say I'm a strong person, not that they're using an excuse, but I, I don't really always think that's really the issue. I think what sounds like there's maybe a, a difference in maturity level. I think yes. uh, maybe there's a just a general difference in compatibility. Uh, scheduling, you have to give different lives. You're just not lining up and he doesn't seem to be a good communicator about his feelings and it's creating this tension. And it sounds like you just kind of followed your gut that it wasn't the right fit. And he could be a nice guy and all those things can still be true. Yeah. So I don't I, know. I definitely take blame in the communication part though because that's definitely not my forte. <laughs> we can all, we can all be we better, all but sometimes bad. it's easier to communicate with people we're more compatible with. I agree. And, and sometimes people yeah. help us communicate better. And I think we all can try, but like, um, you know, sometimes me, I, I can ramble. I need someone who can tell me <laughs> to not. And I'll be like, great, awesome. <laughs> and then like, you know, but like, 
if someone doesn't like press pause, I just keep going. You know, I'll just fucking keep going, man. You know, <laughs> and then uh, someone will be like, six months later, be like, shut the fuck up. You know, like, and I'll be like, what? I don't, I, don't, you know, like some. It's just sometimes oh it's compatibility. You know. Um, no, I agree. I think he. You probably just need someone that's a little bit more independent, and more business minded and ambitious, like how you are. It has nothing to do with you with why it didn't work out. It, it, just because you're strong and independent and you have a lot going for you does not mean that you should, you know, think down about yourself and it's, think it's your fault. Yeah, I, yeah. I totally agree. I think the biggest takeaway is one, I think it's good that you acknowledge in every relationship that doesn't work out, there's things you can improve and maybe you can improve about your communication. Mm -hmm. I don't think you should diminish your overall sense of self-worth and who you are as a person. All right. Keep on keeping okay. on. Good luck in your search for someone who's a better fit. You got this. <laughs> thanks. All right. Take care. All the All best. Right. Well, Kayla, thanks for calling in. Uh, I'm Nick. This is Tasha. Hello. Hi. How can uh, we help? <laughs> um, so it's kind of a lot. So I'll just try to sum it up as quick as possible. But I've been with my husband for 11 years and we've been married for four and the past year has been pretty rough for us. And I've had a lot of doubts about the future and stuff. And like, I've made a ton of sacrifices on my part, like to have a happy marriage, but he doesn't really do much giving. And we have two kids. So I'm so torn with like, what's best for them in this situation? You know, like, do I stay in this marriage? Like, I believe in fighting for it for sure. But like, I don't want to like screw them up you know, like in their future. But like, if they see the way that he treats me, like that's just teaching them to like treat their, you know, my son to teach, to treat women the same way his dad does or for his daughter to look for a man that treats her like that. Like he's just really disrespectful mm. towards me, mm -hmm. you know, and just, so I guess just like divorce in general with kids. Like, what do you guys think? Like with marriage and divorce, like at what point do you, get out of it for the sake of your kids. Well, and there's a lot more, like, I feel like that's why I'd have to explain so much. So you like fully understand like the extremity of it, but like, that's kind of trying to sum it up. <laughs> I feel like, yeah. I mean, thank you for sharing for one. I know that's not easy to do. And mm -hmm. the fact that you are in the situation and trying, you know, I think we can get the gist without you spilling all the tea. Right. But, uh, so thank you. Have you guys, Tasha, do you want to? Have you guys um, gone to therapy at all? No, and he won't do that. I have. You because have. Because I struggle with my own things, you know. But you've asked him. It's just. But in general, like, just because I feel like there's kind of controversy about the whole marriage thing. Like, so many people stay in marriages for years just for the sake of their kids, you know. Right. And I know many people myself that have done that. But like later on down the road, it's almost like those kids might have wished that they their parents would have split. It would have been happier for them, you know? Yeah. Um, it's just hard because, like, I can't really control his actions totally. and his behavior, but, like, he's my role model for my kids, you know? Right. Yeah. And, and in some it's just, some ways that will never change. change. Um, but ha just, And you've asked him to go to therapy? Are you assuming yeah. he won't go? You, you, you asked. No. Yeah, no, he will not go. <laughs> well, I definitely feel like there are reasons that you can work on to stay in a marriage, but there are also reasons that <laughs> you don't need to put yeah. up with daily. And you know I, what just, I mean, I'm that person that like I will fight so hard, but like I feel like sometimes I'm not thinking about my kids, you know, and it's mm -hmm. like, ugh, I don't want to screw them up. I had a pretty rough childhood myself, and it's like I just want to. I just wish they could speak to me <laughs> from the future and be like, this is what you need to do. Do you talk to, the, I mean, you know, I want to stay together for our family, but I'm just like, you also have a right I'm to be happy to too. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm glad you're thinking of your kids and that's very, uh, um, selfless of you. Selfless, right? Yeah. But you have the right to be happy and you being happy, I think will probably have a more positive impact I on can. your kids as well. <laughs> I and, agree with you know, that. Certainly, I think what yeah. was like, sorry, what'd you say? No, go ahead. And like, I think what really affects me too is like over the years, like I've learned how to just brush stuff under the rug just to like keep the peace, you know, when really there are things that I need out of this relationship, blah, blah, blah. 
And like, I feel like he's like taken advantage of that in mm-hmm. a way. So now he just like talks to me however he wants. And like, I try not to pick fights about it, but which maybe this is marriage. You know what I mean? Like maybe no. that's just what happens after years of being together. No, that's not what happens. Like, I, maybe uh, in some, but I don't think that's the, I don't think that's something you should accept. Definitely um, not. And I, I just want to reiterate, I really appreciate you sharing that. I know this isn't easy to do and, you know, hopefully there's people listening, not hopefully there's people listening who are going through, but I'm sure there's people going through this as well. So you um, sharing this story uh, will have a positive impact on, on people listening. So thank you. Um, yeah, no problem. Listen, I, I think, uh, think you know, listen, there's, th- there's no black and white answer to this. Um, I've learned in early on in relationships through you talking to people, uh, those opinions I really respect, you can only do 100% of your half. Exactly. Um, and it sounds like you're more than willing to do that. And it doesn't sound like he is. And there, there's a breaking point. And I understand you guys made a commitment to each other, but he's not living up to that. Uh, and you're trying to, and right now you're, now you're trying to also not only live up to your commitment that you made to him, you're trying to also do the work that he's supposed to be doing. And that's just not sustainable. Um, in addition to that, he's also, it sounds like acting in a manner of which that you don't want to have your kids be around and it's going to impact both your son and your daughter in ways that could affect them for the rest of their lives. And so at some point it's not an ideal solution, but you know, don't be afraid. There's a, there's a better solution out for you than this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, and just accepting this is your life is not something I think you should, should do. Never settle. Um, you're not, you're not quitting. Uh, you're, you're trying to fight and you, you need someone to fight with you. So have you taken the kids to therapy with you? Um, it, I not yet. I mean, they're, my daughter's one and a half and my son's five. So like, oh, I see, I see, luckily I, see. I don't know if they're like on the lines of understanding yet, but like my son is, cause Soon, he like yeah. talks down to my son too. And my son sees it. Right. You know, so it just like breaks my heart because it's really, what can I do? I can't really control his behavior. And I think the hardest thing is that we have, we've been together for so long. Yeah. So I kind of feel like Stuck. there's no way out at this point. You yeah, know, like I'd be like, we have too much invested family. You know, uh, but you have to stop there. You can't yeah. worry about everybody else. Yeah. You really, really can't because guess what? And that, they like, are not with you only, daily going through everything that you're going through. They're not the ones raising your kids. They're not the one taking right. whatever is happening. So you need to stop <laughs> thinking about and worrying about what everybody else is thinking. That's number one. Yeah. Maybe, and maybe that's like what I wanted to hear out of this because like, I mean, of course, in the back of my head, I'm like, I need to do what's right for me, but I really feel like I, I can't do that. No, like, you know what I mean? You I have can. Kids, yeah. like, You're just scared. You I don't know. Yeah. It, there's, and there's a lot more that go into it. I know that like finances, um, I don't know what you're going to do, what your job, I don't know what your specifics are, but there's a lot that goes into this kind of decision. And all I can say is that you have to think about yourself and you're already thinking about your kids, but you have to not be scared and you have to make that jump. I think you already know what you need to do. Tasha has right. been divorced. If you didn't know us and she is glowing over here. <laughs> Um, like I, I totally understand what you're going through in a, in a way. I thank God that I didn't have to, I don't have kids and I didn't have to go through that with him just because I know that that's really hard and I can't imagine what you're going through. And like, you know, there were some bad times that we got through a few years ago and that, cause you're probably thinking like, if you knew this about him or, you know, like he wasn't supportive in other ways, like, why did you marry him? But like, we went through some rough times and he really stood beside me, didn't leave me when I wanted to get out. And even though he didn't express the way he felt to me during that time, like the fact that he waited for me really like gave me a respect for him. Right. So like when we got back together, it was like I put him on a pedestal or something. And like, I just like gave up everything I needed just to like make us happy, you know, or make him happy. Yeah. But now like, I feel like it's really kind of, bitten me so, yeah, <laughs> because it's... now he just does how whatever he wants talks to me and just knows that i'll be here <laughs> it sounds like there's an uneven power dynamic yeah. and i think all you uh, i thought it sounds like you feeling your gut the, the right thing to do give it kind of that last ditch effort you know really put it on the table of how you're feeling and what you want from him and that you want to make this work but you care about x y and z and your kids and if he's willing to go to therapy and and work on this and and have the um family dynamic that you think not only that you and your kids deserve, then you're more than willing. But if he says no, and he's not willing to do his part, then he's giving you no choice. I would look at it that way. 
that he's forcing you in a decision that you don't want to make. Do you have a community of people around you that can be supportive? Like, do you? Yes, thank God. Are you a Christian? I, or? I wouldn't have been able to get through my life thus far. But yeah, so anytime I need support, he's like the last one I call, which is really sad to say. <laughs> Because, like, that's your husband. He's supposed to be, like, my biggest supporter. Exactly. You know, my go-to. And it's like, you're the last one I call. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Well, I'm really sorry. Um, I know it's not easy. And, um, again, I just want to thank you again for sharing just because, I, I, you know, this happened. I think we see this a lot out there. We get a lot of questions of, about it. And uh, marriage can be a beautiful yeah. thing. And, um you know, it can be awesome. And it, sometimes you can get in a situation that, you feel helpless because mm-hmm. your partner um, isn't doing their part, and um, that sucks. But um, yeah, I would uh, just be as upfront and honest with him as you can. Put it out there and be willing to make it work. But he has to do his his half. You can't and make it, excuses yeah. for his and like actions. Pa- and like Tasia said, like I do know what I need to do, but I'm just so interested to like hear what you had to say about it because like I really like how you like analyze on people's opinions mm-hmm. or questions and stuff. So I just wanted to hear. So thank you for answering my question. No, well, well, thank you for sharing. Hopefully Tasha said some light from her personal experiences, but she's, uh, yeah, she's living proof sure. that things can not go the way you anticipate and it can still be okay. But one thing I right. will say, <clears throat> if, if I don't know if you're a Christian, but you should pray about it. What's that? Sorry. I said, I don't know if you're a Christian, but you should pray about it. I think that's how, that's what got me through a lot of my tough times. Um, you, you never and know I, if you're I making the right decision. So. Oh, good. I don't know. I just feel like. Yeah. So I do pray for sure. And like, that's honestly probably why I've stuck around and sacrificed and, you mm-hmm. know, made all these things. Cause like, even if he's not doing good, I try to be that person. So he'll, it'll reflect on out of him or something. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it but yeah, I pray like, and, and I get how religion can make you think like, oh, you need to stay with him because. Yeah, promise to God. Yeah. Like, you know, and I understand that. But again, you don't need to put yourself and be miserable. And there's other words I can use because I don't really know what's going on, but you don't need to do all that for someone that doesn't appreciate you. Okay. Well, awesome. Thank you guys so much. Thank you so no much. No problem. Uh huh. Bye. 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 Well, anyways, uh, Taisha. Yo. <laughs> so good to meet you. Um, so good to meet you. I really thank you for being vulnerable and sharing with this and um, sharing your story. We do get a ton of questions, as we saw with uh, our one caller. Uh, marriage can be such a tricky thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, not being happy in a marriage can be a trickier thing. And what is what should we do with kids is... Uh, sometimes an impossible answer. And then if we do unfortunately have to end a relationship, whether it's our choice or someone else's, how do we move on without being judged is it can be a challenge. And so uh, thank you for, for helping us through it. And, and hopefully people listening, uh, you know, you're, you're not alone with all the things that we Definitely judge ourselves not. for. Um, <laughs> so thanks for coming on. And uh, again, for those listening, try not to judge yourselves, get out there, start dating. Uh, we all have baggage. But uh, so does everyone else. And um, <laughs> you don't have to talk about it on a first date, people. Oh, you don't. <laughs> you really don't. You don't even necessarily have to talk about it on a second date, you know, casually put it in there. Yeah. And if you want to, fine. Sure. But don't, like, it'll come out, you know, right? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. And fake it till you make it. Have that confidence, right? You got to do that. Yes, queen. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks again. Thank you, Tasha. What a pleasure to meet you. So nice. Uh, you. Thank you guys for tuning in. Feel free to give us five stars on iTunes. Yes. Um, your reviews are helpful. Uh, your feedback's helpful. You can still give us five stars and give critical feedback. I agree with that. Um, anyways, thanks again, as always, for tuning in. Uh, it's been another episode of The Vile Files. Take care, guys. Have a great week. See you next time. Bye.